This video is on how to field strip and clean the Mossberg 590 shockwave. This will also apply to Mossberg 500 variants. This is not a disassembly or modification video. This is a completely stock Mossberg shockwave and we're only going to break it down as far as we need to go for basic maintenance and cleaning. To get started, you'll need a few things. 12 gauge cleaning kit. CLP, which stands for Cleaner, Lubricant, and Protectant. This particular brand I'm using today is Hops MDL which stands for Moisture Displacing Lubricant. The label might make you think that it's a dedicated lubricant, but it's actually a cleaner lubricant and protectant. Gun cleaning rags. You can use an old t-shirt, but I prefer these rags specifically made for gun cleaning because they don't leave lint. A brass punch to remove the trigger housing pin. Cotton swabs with an angled tip to get into the harder to reach spaces. And powder-free disposable gloves. And I'll put links to everything in the notes below. I always start out with a clear and empty weapon, but of course I'm going to double check. To do that, grab hold of the foreign, which pulls the action back towards the receiver. If it's locked in position, press this lever here to release it. I can see that the chamber is clear. And I can see the follower, so I know the magazine tube is completely empty. This gun is clear and safe, so now we can move on. Remove the magazine cap. It can also be called a takedown screw depending on which model you have. Now remove the barrel. Use the brass punch to push out the trigger housing pin. Pull out the trigger housing. Now the cartridge interrupter and cartridge stop bars will come right out. And here's a close up view of what they look like. From this point, you can pull out the forend or remove the bolt slide. I'm just going to remove the bolt slide first. I'm going to push the extractor down so that I can move the bolt slide back. When the bolt slides at about this position here, it should come right out. It usually doesn't pop out that easy, but that's okay. Now you can remove the action slide tube assembly. The forend's attached to it, so from this point on, I'm just going to refer to this whole part as the forend. Now remove the bolt from the receiver. Now squeeze the elevator assembly together, like that, and you can remove it from the receiver. This is as far as you need to go for a basic field strip and clean, so let's get started cleaning. I'm going to start with the magazine tube and receiver, so I'm going to spray this Hops MDL on it and wipe it down. I'm done with the exterior, so I'm going to spray a little bit inside the receiver and use the nylon brush to clean inside. Now I'm going to use a microfiber rag to clean out the inside of the receiver, but I'm not going to wipe it completely dry. I'm going to leave a light coat of lubricant. And that goes for pretty much all the parts on this shotgun. I'm going to apply MDL or CLP and scrub it down with a nylon brush, then wipe it clean with a rag. But I'm going to leave a light coat of lubricant on all metal surfaces, and a medium coat of lube on anything that shows signs of metal on metal wear. I will leave the polymer parts completely dry. I don't want anything wet or slippery on the parts that I need to grip onto, like the grip and the forend. Now I'm going to get started on the forend and everything connected to it. So I'm going to spray CLP or MDL on the nylon brush and start scrubbing all surfaces. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to leave any CLP or anything wet on any of these polymer surfaces, so I'm going to wipe the forend completely dry. Spray CLP on the nylon brush and scrub the elevator. Now wipe off the excess CLP, but leave a light coat just for a layer of protectant. Now I'm going to spray some hops on the bolt slide and start scrubbing with a nylon brush. 
Now I'm going to spray on some more MDL and wipe it down and leave a light coat of protectant. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a bolt. Spray on MDL, scrub it down the brush, then wipe it down with a rag and leave a light coat of protectant. Now do the same thing with a cartridge interrupter and the cartridge stop bars. Now add the cleaner to the nylon brush and start scrubbing the trigger housing. This is the part where I would use the angled cotton swabs to get into the harder to reach areas. After I'm done with that, I'm going to use the microfiber rag and wipe it clean. Attach the bronze bore brush to the cable. Feed the loose end of the cable into the barrel starting from the chamber end and pull the bore brush out through the muzzle end. There's no specific number of times you need to do this. It really depends on how much you've been shooting. In this case, I'm just going to pull it through a couple of times and move on. I'm going to spray CLP on this patch. Now I'm going to wrap it around the chamber mop. Feed the cable in chamber end first and pull it out through the muzzle end. There's several different ways you can clean the inside of the bore, but I like using this method. Wrapping the patch around the chamber mop really gets the bore clean. The first few patches will come out really dirty. Just keep pulling fresh patches through the bore until they start to come out clean. Now that the bore is clean, I'm going to focus on the outside of the barrel. Spray cleaner on the outside of the barrel and wipe it clean with a microfiber rag. Just like all the other metal parts, I'm going to leave a light coat of CLP or MDL just for a layer of protectant. Before you reinstall the elevator, make sure that the safety's on. If you have the safety off, meaning in the fire position, it could get in the way of the elevator when you're trying to put it back in the receiver. Looking inside the receiver, it looks like this. Safety's on, safety's off. So let's put it back on. The tabs on the end of the elevator bars are going to fit here and right here. I'm going to be installing it like this. So I'm going to squeeze the bars together and match the tabs on the elevator with the holes on the receiver. Now line up those rails and reinstall the end. You'll see that the action gets stuck right about here. Just push the right bar up, then push the left bar. And you can continue pushing the bars into the receiver. Position the bolt facing like this, and put it back in the receiver. Now put the bolt slide back in. Now match this bar up with the hole in the receiver right there. See that? That's going to go in the hole. And when installed correctly, it's going to be flush with the inside of the receiver just like that. Now take the other bar, and it looks a little bit different from the other one, and install it on the left side of the receiver, or the bottom part of your screen. And this is what it looks like when they're both installed correctly. Notice how both bars are flush with the sides of the receiver. Now you can reinstall the trigger housing. The front part goes in first, then you can push the back in. Now push the trigger housing pin back in. Now you can line up the barrel with the receiver and push it back on. Screw the magazine cap back on. Let's do a function check. So the safety is on, so when I work the slide and pull the trigger, nothing should happen. Nothing happens, that's good. Now I'm going to move the safety to the fire position and pull the trigger. I hear it click, but don't release it. Work the slide again, let the trigger reset, then pull it again. If you hear it click, everything's good. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.